Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regular scheduled council meeting for July 5th, 2022 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, good evening, council, citizens, and administrators. Ms. Bernie, if you would call roll, please. Mayor Laurie. Yes, uh, here. Sorry. Someone. Vice Mayor Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Bond. Here. Councilman Cook. Here. Councilwoman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Lindsay. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Seven members present. All right, thank you. And tonight's invocation will be done by Fire Chief Trustee. Father Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. Thank you for the well-needed rain that we received today. Please be in this meeting. Let thy perfect will be done. Bless our emergency responders and our troops overseas. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> all right, moving on. We'll need to do uh, an action on the minutes for the uh, June 21st, 2022 regular meeting. So moved. Second. Motion by Ms. Eggleston, second by Mr. Vice Mayor. Any discussion, council, on those minutes? When you're ready. All right, Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Minutes accepted 7 0. All right, thank you. Moving on. All right, two communications. Randy, the way you got this, I mean, is this is this actual communications? The way the way I is there people speaking from these? Yeah. Um, well, Planning Board President Steve Fields, he sent an email in. He is here today for any questions okay. uh, for the preliminary plats approval. Um, council will not be taking any action on this tonight. It's just part of the procedures they have to go through. Um, so um, I attached his email. I think now is a good opportunity to kind of go over the tentative timeline that I have uh, stuck out with the council. I did email this to council today. Please. Um, but according to chapter 1278 of our code that deals specifically with residential plan unit developments, once they get the recommendation from the planning board to approve the preliminary plat, which they got today, they will have not less than 60 days from the planning board notification uh, to have a public hearing. Um, and within that 60 days, <coughs> the legal ad has to appear 30 days before the hearing. So legal ad for special meeting runs on or about August 4th, 2022. The special meeting for the public hearing only would be on or about Thursday, September 1st, 2022. That is just the hearing side of things. Council does not have to take any action for another 30 days. So we take that to account. Um, so within 30 days of the hearing, council must take action to approve, disapprove, make recommendations or fail it. Um, and that would be the second special meeting on Thursday, September 29th, 2022. These are just days approximate. We want to keep it closer to those end dates as possible mm -hmm. to give administration time to work on things on the inside. Um, so council can discuss that amongst yourself if you have that availability. I would like to get something solidified so I can start with the legal advertising and definitely get it on the calendars. So again, um, yeah. If you have the special meeting on Thursday, September, whatever date you decide to have the public hearing, I just need to have the legal add in 30 days prior to that. What was your date, September what, sir? Um, September 1st, Thursday, September 1st. Okay. I'm good that day if the rest of council is good. I'm not. September 1st. What about the following? Uh, well, we don't want to have to be that Wednesday before. Wednesday the 31st would be great for me. The day before, would that work for you, Mr. Bridge? Yeah, I can make it work. Council? Oh, yeah. What day is that? The 31st? August 31st. Oh, August? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Rodwell? Yes, sir. So it's the day before the proposed? Correct. Okay. So, okay. Would you like a motion for that, or? Yeah. Do you think they need a motion? So we're going to do the, the uh, Wednesday, August 31st. Okay. At 7. Um, Yes, Thank you. Is it all right if we do the Thursday, September 29th meeting the day before, do that Wednesday the 28th? That's fine with me. Are you good? Say that again. Say that again. For the second <laughs> meeting, we guys got to do action. Oh, second meeting. Um, Wednesday. I'm assuming Mr. Grimm doesn't have any Thursday availability. No. So that Wednesday would be September 28th. 
Yeah. Uh, 28th, another Wednesday. Yeah, it's fine with me, Council. September 28th, you said? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. um, 6.30. Uh, yeah, 31st. At what time? No. Uh, I assume 6.30. 6.30, 6 okay. Sounds good? Yep. Um, so today I was, um, I got a hold of a law firm out of Columbus. Um, I'm going to have them come down and do a presentation to Council on TIF, TIF, TIF Education. It is the same gentleman, I should say I'm going to, I have a preliminary phone call with him tomorrow at 11 in the morning. He's the same gentleman who went up to Springfield and presented to their commissioners back in May regarding the developments they've gone on. He's really good. He is an infrastructure lawyer, per se, out of Columbus. So if he has availability to come down, I would love him. If I can't get him, I am going to have someone else come down to <coughs> the council just and how important they are and how they can be used. So that's the next step. Um, we have also, me and Jake have kind of figured out the taxes. I don't want to say for sure that we have them nailed down, but I think we're almost 95% positive we do. We do know it's going to be one taxing bill out of Miami County, uh, and depending on what taxes they're going to pay, they'll pay Miami County property tax, more than likely not pay the Clark County property tax, or not Clark County, but they'll still pay any levies that we have on their outside millage. We're allowed 10 mills, so anything on the outside, that's your fire, your EMS, um, your health levy, your street improvement levy, they'll pay into that, but they won't pay the 58 mills that the Clark County charges. So I think we're about settled up with that. We're gonna run some final numbers through the appropriate individuals before we actually have anything legit to counsel, but we are about to have that done as well. Okay. Mr. Sir. And also include city tax, right? Oh yeah, they'll definitely okay, they'll, they'll well, they'll yeah, they'll definitely pay. Yeah, 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 they'll definitely pay city tax. Just check. For sure. Mr. Yep. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, we authorized the traffic study. Uh, that is, you guys voted that in. I will be signing that tomorrow. It's effective tomorrow. Will that be done by the uh, yes meeting? Yeah, I was told it was. I was, I, I was told about a two, three week turnaround. So they know that's a key, crucial part to this. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the uh, environmental study that DDC did. Mm -hmm. Will we have access to that? Um, at some point in time, they will. Right now, it's theirs. Okay. We can request it. From what I understand. Yeah, I'm sure you can down, down the road, down the road, yeah. But I, I'm no attorney, so I don't want to say yes or no to that. Yeah. That's also another crucial bit of information. Well, they're, they're, they're doing the EPA guidelines, so they're, they're going to follow the minimum EPA guidelines of what they have to do, so, mm -hmm. yeah. But I agree with you. I think you guys should take a look at it for sure. I'm Anything? done. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? All right. No. All right. And then we have the planning board approval. The planning board met uh, last week uh, and had the site plan for this uh, gun range at Safe and Sound Outfitters. Part of the, uh, our, our section of the code that deals with planning board says that they make a recommendation on the council. So that's what you guys have in front of you. We do have a uh, representative from Safe and Sound in the audience today, should council have any questions. Um, but basically we just need an additional approval of their site plan. So after if council has any questions you would need a motion at this juncture to, mm -hmm. okay yep council any questions mm -hmm. comments feedback for anyone I, I do have a question for the representative if you would sir so i can see you <laughs> thank you uh in the uh mr lindsay he needs to state his name and address for the record yes name and address sir for the record uh mark hensley at 5040 studebaker road tip city ohio In the uh, paperwork that we receive, the range is good for up to a 50 caliber. Correct. I also could be on the, looking at the wrong papers, but are you also having a rifle range? There will be a, a rifle archery range. We don't know yet. We just put it in there as a rifle archery in the plans. Okay. And what up, up to what caliber will that range handle? Uh, 308. 308. Okay, and it'll all be, the, the uh, document said it would all be soundproofing, nobody would hear anything outside of the building? That's correct. Okay, it also said they wouldn't hear it inside the building. I find that, that I not believe, correct. I've been a lot of ranges. <laughs> I always inside knew the existing, off it's inside copies. the existing building. Right, right. You will not hear it inside the existing building. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, that's some of the questions I have, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Any other questions, council? Uh, Mr. Hensley, just one quick question. I mean, what kind of feedback? I mean, I'm sure the buzz has been going a little bit with this has been I mean, what kind of feedback have you got from your customers and whatnot? Uh, it's just an outpouring of 
Uh, everybody wants it just as fast as they can get it. And we don't know if we can, with supply chains, we don't know if we can do it that fast, but we're going to try. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions for council? All right. I guess I would need a motion from council then. So moved. Second. A motion by Mr. Lindsay, second by, I thought I heard Ms. Eagleson first. Okay. No further discussion. You can call for the vote to approve. Okay. Good. Councilman Lindsay. Did she get to second? Mm hmm Okay. Yes. I thought Ben had Councilman it. Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Vaughn. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Passed the 7 0. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Hensley. It'd be nice to have a, a expanding and newer business in town. So thank you for everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Best of luck. Too. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I'd, I'd have one more question for him, if I may. Yes. Any idea what the pricing will be for the ranges? Per hour? Uh, for range time. You going to do it by the hour or? Uh, half hour, hour. Okay. Maybe uh, 10 bucks. Something like that. We don't All right. Something comparable. Comparable with the ranges around? There's nothing comparable to this range. <laughs> well, there's other ranges you can shoot 50 calories in, or 50 cal in, and 308s in on the rifle ranges. So there, there are other ranges around. It may not be built like what you're building, but there are other ranges around that will handle those calibers. Correct. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Right, thank you. Sir, back to you. Awesome. Uh, so since we are lacking a full BZA, council is acting on their behalf. So attached is a BZA hearing for Bluebird Construction on behalf of 931 Furwood. Uh, again, the packet is attached. Let me pull mine out so I can follow along here. Uh, this particular case, as I did in the case report, pretty straightforward. They have an accessory structure they want to put in their backyard. Uh, they have every due right to do so. The only issue is is that there's a gas line splitting the, the backyard in half. So that that calls for the setback, I mean the variance request on the side here. I want to say they're asking for a three foot variance because they got two listed on here. The back one doesn't have any impact on the gas line location. I think they're just requesting it just to request it for um, from whatever case they may be having. And Casey and your applicant, you come to the podium please if you don't mind. This is Casey from Bluebird Construction. So he's seeking also a five foot rear setback. Um, minimum is 10. Uh, the biggest thing though is definitely that side. The minimum is five. They're asking for two foot, which would equate to a three foot variance. So they simply do not have to relocate that gas line. Um, they technically don't have to, but in the event that it needs to be repaired, they're gonna have to drill through that concrete floor to get to that gas line. So undo hardship due to the placement of the gas line that the uh, owner did not install. Um, as I spoke with Casey today, my recommendation is to go ahead and approve the side setback, um, but do not grant the rear setback, just simply because we have precedence that we need to set, and it doesn't have any impact on the overall project, especially with the gas line. It just moves it five feet closer to the house. Casey's here to speak on behalf of that if he has any additional uh, information. Again, that's just my recommendation. Council can vote how they see fit. Sir. Just state your name and address for the uh, record, please. Yeah, my name is Casey Leslie with uh, Bluebird Construction. Address is 7720 Milton Carlisle. In your uh, paperwork, the, uh, I don't know the wrong sheet, uh, I believe you said you wanted the, the setback off the back property line, so easy for easement to getting into the garage. That's correct. And from the, the drawing that I looked at, the, uh, I think it would be tight to get in there. I'm trying to pull it up here so I can talk a little more intelligently on it. Because uh, part of that garage is gonna be sitting like, like the house is gonna be sitting here and the garage is gonna be sitting here. So you need that extra footage to turn behind the house without hitting the house to line up and get into the garage. Is that correct? Is that what, what the uh, synopsis of that uh, write-up said? That's correct. Okay. 
uh, for council, uh, thank you, sir. For council, I have no problem with that back setback so they can get into that garage. I mean, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense to build a garage, a two car garage, and not be able to get into it uh, without possibility of hitting your house, either going in or backing out. So uh, I would have no problem with the, uh, I believe, was it about a two foot setback, sir, or three foot? It was good. two foot off of the side, but the, la the allowable is 10 on the rear, but we're asking for five. Uh, okay. The the, uh, yeah, I wouldn't have a problem with the five foot off the back of it. For I'm, I'm confused because there's no alley in the back. You do understand that, right? Yeah. So, okay. I just I thought you were talking like there's their entrance in, in, in no, no, through the alley. No, it, it's coming off of their, their, their front of the house. It would be coming off of that and then curving to get into the garage. And with it being back another five foot, it gives them five foot more distance to make that curve to get into the left side of the garage. And then when they back out, it gives them room so they don't run into their house, is what, is what I think they're, That's correct. They're, he's alluding to. And I can see that in the drawings, and it makes sense to me. So like, like I stated, I don't have a problem with the five foot uh, off the back of the property line. And uh, or the uh, or the uh, three feet. foot off of the uh, off of the sideline because of the gas line, due to no fault of the homeowners doing, they did not install it. So, so I'm, I'm good, sir. Thank you, sir. So I'm looking at the aerial view here. The driveway will come around the house, right side of the house. Yes, sir. To the garage. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, it's set on one of our documents here that something about uh, comments from neighbors have you had any comments complaints from neighbors no uh, we sent out a mailing with the people within 500 feet we did get quite a few phone calls on this this one which we usually very rarely get phone calls but once people found out what it was for they, they didn't voice any concerns okay None. I'm done thank you Randy what was your concern again what was I just don't think the, the five foot setbacks are the indication because if, if it was in the back going towards the, like someone was coming into an alley and had to make that sharp turn to get in, I right. understand that, but it's almost essentially a straight shot, assuming that the garage doors would be facing the house, not to the side, right? Right. The garage. Really, you're coming down the side of the thing and you're going straight, you're heading straight to that door. Yeah. I don't have an issue with it personally. I just, for setting precedence moving forward, if it's not, in, if it's not inhibiting the project, it shouldn't be approved. That's just my thing because someone else may come in and just say, hey, I want a five foot because the last guy got it. It's no undue hardship for him to have it 10 foot according to the code, opposed to just because his, he has his length is 125 feet on the parcel. So he's probably got what? Looks like 51 foot. From yeah. Feet. So well, that, that's uh, 41 foot wants, from the back of the house to the, the corner of the, back the left corner of the garage. So that's at the, so if you get take off five foot, that's going to give them uh, 37, 30, 36 foot. Uh, as long as they didn't have to try to bring anything bigger than a pickup truck in there, they could probably do it again. I'm not going to get into their diving skills. Can I comment? Oh, gotcha. Sorry. Can I make a comment? Yes, go ahead. Um, yeah, so the, the 41 foot and, you know, the, the 41 foot is a measurement from the, the existing covered patio. Right. So, and then the 51 foot is from the house to the proposed front uh, side of the garage. And that was with the five foot allowance off the rear. We build garages all the time. We just finished building a three oversized three car in Park Lane. Um, and it's, the further that you can tuck that building back, it just allows what he was saying to come. I mean, there's a 10 foot space between the side of the house and the property line. So you come around that house and you, you curve in and then you have to straighten back out to be able to pull in the garage. I've seen this before where somebody builds a two car garage and they can only park one car in there because of it's so tight to the house. They, they can't make that curve or that maneuver, that S curve. And it's the same thing when you're backing out you have to do an S curve around the house. So pushing it back, it, it, it you know, the five feet it makes a big difference. But thank you. It's Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm, I'm done now. Oh, you're good? Yeah, I'm good. Mr. Thanks. So without the five foot setback, 
it's 46 feet from the house to the garage. It would be um, 51, so yeah, 46 feet to the front from the house, not the covered patio, correct? Be an awful amateur driver and not be able to get in at 46 feet. I, th I think you also may consider the mm -hmm. fact of uh, a camper or a trailer being backed in there, mm -hmm. uh, a boat, you know, something of that sort that could be parked in front of the garage. You know, if they wanted to put it behind their fence, you know, mm -hmm. that comes into play too. Um, uh, you know, I have multiple trucks and trailers. Mm -hmm. You hook a truck and a trailer together, you're four, I'm 40 feet long with mm -hmm. a truck and a trailer. So that might be something that happens in the future. So if it goes up, if it goes back to Mr. Bridge to the five feet that they're one, we're not going to, he would, he wouldn't be over any utility lines. No, cause no, cause the utility runs to the left of it. So moving it forward, would just move it along parallel along that gas line okay. closer to the house. Okay. Or further, depending on which way you guys go with it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other? How big is this truck? All right. Well, does anybody want to make a motion? Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Sir. Sorry. Uh, I move to accept the plans as they were submitted with the five foot setback and the two foot off the side. Second. Any other discussion before we call for a vote? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. All right, Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. No. Mayor Lowry. No. Vice Mayor Grimm. No. Councilman Vaughn. No. Councilman Cook. No. And Councilwoman Eggleston. Motion fails two to five. Mr. Mayor. Sir. I move we accept the uh, proposal without the five foot setback. So out of ten. So right. two and ten? Just the side, the side change, but not, not the, the rear. Two feet on the side, but not. And the rear. Rear setback. Rear is setback is not the code. Five, is the code. Yeah. yeah. So motion by Mr. Vice Mayor, second by Mr. Bond. <laughs> Second was gone. <laughs> Other discussion? All right, Councilman Cook? No. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. <clears throat> That passes six to one. Thank you, Ms. Burner. I'll give you, I'll shoot you a letter in the mail so you can move forward. Thank you. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There. All right. All right. And back to you, Mr. Bridge. Oh, city manager report. Okay. All right, uh, under informational items, a little bit of township contract, the first thing. So uh, one of their elected officials, Mr. Diltz, came into my office. He is not happy with how the contract was agreed to and signed upon. So he kind of wants to come back and possibly go with uh, talk to council about redoing those terms. So we were pretty vocal when we were over there the twice, the two times we were over there about how often it would be staffed, that we would be staffed first and then they would be staffed as needed. Uh, we told them that council, you know, supported this contract, supported the pricing. Uh, after the fact, they're not too happy with it. Um, so um, I told them I would bring it up to you guys. 
I also invited him to come speak tonight, but I don't, I don't see him in the audience anywhere. Uh, but as of now, we think that we've been doing a stellar job with handling the contract terms. And again, we have to take care of our own before we take care of someone else. Um, it's unfortunate because it's a case of they signed the contract. They were very aware of the terms then, and now they kind of want to change those terms. So um, as I explained to Mr. Diltz, that since it was a signed document passed by council, I have zero authority in this. Um, I'm the middleman. So invited him again to come speak to council. Um, you guys can have that authority to open that contract back up if you so choose. But until you guys make that motion, we have to continue on with the terms that we have. So I did my due part. I let you guys know they were not happy with it. Um, if they come and voice their opinion, I'll try to let you guys know in advance that they come at the maybe next meeting or the one in August. But I didn't want anyone to be side blinded by that. Anything you want to add to that? Uh, we've been staffing Elizabeth Township as best we can. Again, as Mr. Briggs said, our citizens in the in New Carlisle come first. In April, we uh, either partial or full shifts in Elizabeth Township. We had a station man partial or full. 26 days in April, 23 days in May. Um, the only one call since the new contract uh, was not answered by us due to our medic being on response. All of their calls have been answered either from the crew being in their stage or the friend of the city. Um, it, we're doing what we can do, you know, and they knew that ahead of time. We, we explained it to them. There were several times in the, before we went into contract negotiations that I told them that this was coming, that we can no longer, and I told them as a fire chief, I will no longer cut our citizens' throat to man them. And it was, I told them at that time, 50% of the time, I was leaving this city unmanned to protect a station that has less than 100, 100 calls a year. In, in April, they had 10 runs. In May, they had seven, comparing to our 60 to or 70 to 80 runs per month. Did he say what he didn't like about it? He doesn't. No. He doesn't like the price. Price. <laughs> he thought we should charge more. Yeah. <laughs> less. I'll go less. for that. Yeah, way less. It, yeah. It's, it's one of those. I have some personal feelings about it that I won't say. Uh, but to me, yeah, our citizens come first. Yeah. Plain and simple. And to be honest with you, this is, I think, my third contract cycle with them. The first one, my first sure. year, it was inherited. Second year, we increased it. And then this is what we got the third one. You know, we need to move in a direction that we take care of our own people, you know. So we'll have your support. I just, like I said, I didn't want to even be side blinded if you got a phone call or if you guys got someone just randomly show up at a council meeting. Okay. Yeah. Anything else, Mr. Graham? Mr. Lindsay? So we don't need to do anything tonight on this, correct? No, sir. Unless you guys want to make a motion to reopen the contract. Oh, absolutely not. Thank you. I mean, Thank you. Not, as far as I'm concerned, no. See you in two uh, years. Yep. I do have some thoughts on it. Uh, if they want out of it, which I won't evolve at this moment. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you'd like to talk, I'll give you what I think. And we gave them the option to do, and if Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, automatic mutual aid agreement that was a little bit cheaper, you know, um, and they opted not to do that route. So we did give them options. We gave them two different options. First option was an AMR agreement, so that would mean that we would not man their station at all, but we'd answer all the calls from the city of New Carlisle unless we were on a run for three hundred forty thousand. And then the other one was what we have three hundred ninety thousand for us and us manning the station when we can. Uh, and they chose that one. Yeah. Chief, just uh, for my notes, I should have been writing this down. How many times was it manned in April and May? In April, we had either partial shifts or full shifts, 20, uh, 20, 26, 27 days, and in May, 23 days. Thank you. Any town or any town? Any town, okay. Mr. Vice Mayor. You, Mr. Bridge. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, okay. I mean, it, it is what it is, and they understand our staffing problem because it's nationwide. You know, I'm looking at, you know, I'm trying to staff our station, and right now I've got five people on injured uh, sick leave. You said uh, one uh, trustee approached you. Does he speak just for himself or for all three? You know, I, I would hope he, they had a meeting on it and discussed it. I didn't go into that. 
level with him because that it builds my place. But I, they have the same rules as you guys have as elected officials that they would have to do an open meeting. So I'm assuming they had a meeting to discuss it and then. You see the president? No, what it is, they rotate. Yes, oh, they it's do. a weird system. Okay. But the reason Mr. Dilts Kane is the reason is that he is a firefighter uh, paramedic inspector with the city of Troy Fire Department. So anything relating to fire department, he gets asked with it. And he's one of the trustees. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. I'm done. And if I mean, sir. Sir. And he's one of the trustees that signed the company agreement. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, you know. I signed a contract or agreement for my mortgage and wanted to check in and we went down. <laughs> Amazing how that works, huh? Yeah, I, I do. I can understand that. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Thank you, sir. Sure. Uh, city site audits. I am working on a detailed report for council. I just today, before I got here, got done with the word portion of it, went out, took pictures, and I put it on a board sheet with an explanation of what's going on. My next step is actually get quotes on what it's going to cost to repair. Uh, just so overall of where we're at with it, all the entrance signs as the uh, Honey Creek Welcome to New Carlisle, they're mostly in good structural shape. The one across from Water, Water Dog needs repaired. Every one of them needs repainted. Um, and then you go wherever these signs are located, there's a bunch of other signs like a Farmer's Market, Historic Downtown New Carlisle, uh, Purple Heart, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, one of our recommendations to council is that that the entrance signs just have welcome to New Carlisle. And what we'd like to see is Hensley Park actually expanded and have that to be the communication center for the farmer's market. Because people are going 25, 35 through that area opposed to flying in from 571 on both sides. So working on it, end of day be your guys' call, what you want, how you want to move forward with it. Um, I would like to see some modern signs that we had looked around, bounced around at I'm still waiting on quotes for that, but it is almost done. I got one part of it done, I'm still working on the second half. Just wanted to update you guys on that. Um, tornado sirens, we will be moving to um, have these things set off automatic via signal by the National Weather Service. Um, what we will have to do for that is we will have to move to in-house testing, which is fine. We've had that discussion with Fire Chief. We've had the discussion with Mr. Kiko. Um, and then we can do all this for under $4,000. Um, it says 3500 $3, on my manager report, but we just noticed an error on this quote right here where they charge us for one um, programming for the radio, and we actually need two. The siren. Oh, the siren, I'm sorry. So that's going to go up by 540 bucks. So it's, there's a very valuable thing to having this set off automatically through the weather service because it, <coughs> it will like, take any human error out of the equation. Um, moving forward, I think that's what we need to do. Since it is under my spending limit, I will be moving forward with that. Council's opinion on that is council just okay with having that automatic set off? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Opinion. Sounds good. Especially after the flag we got from the last time. Yeah. Yeah. We're trying to figure all that out, but I think moving this is this is the corrective action to that. We were not the only same one, the only ones in that boat for that particular matter. But you know, we're moving forward. We're just going to eliminate the human error side of things, and we can do it for four thousand. You know. So. If they issue a tornado warning, for automatic. Automatic, it automatically goes yep. off? Cool. Yep. Thank you. Automatically. When the weather, National Weather Service out of Wilmington sets off the signal, it automatically sets ours off. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Um, IGS Flyer. I know I put it last time, but since we're uh, doing on the uh, legislation not tonight, I just want to reattach it. Uh, Miami County annexation, we kind of covered that in the first kind of go around. They did recommend it. Um, again, 1278 is our code section doing that deals with um, our PUDs. I put a little bit of snapshot on here, but please, in the email I sent you guys today, I attached that whole thing. So definitely look past 1278.10 and 1278.11 for your next steps moving forward. So it gives you guys a lot of leeway with maybe you don't like the density, maybe you don't like road there. You don't have to do with what the planning board said. You, as your own body, can make changes and make recommendations. Um, they did go ahead and put the fence requirement around the retention pond. Council can vote to keep that or remove it. It's up to you guys. But you guys will have your say in that. In that, in that um, um, Preliminary plan. Doop, doop, doop. Upcoming legislation for council uh, review. It's that time of year again, annual assessments. So every August we go ahead and we assess for street lighting. We assess for um, any unpaid grass uh, bills that we went out and abated your property, uh, water liens, unpaid water bills. We do that every August. So that'll be coming up. And the legislation I'm still working on. Um, going, not going as fast as I'd like on it. Um, just doing a lot more work recently than normal. So just po poking away at it. But I'm excited to get some of these and to you guys. Then, of course, fun times, upcoming events. We have our annual state audit of finances. That's July 14th and 15th. 
That's when the auditors come on site, they pull records, they test them, they make sure that we're doing well. Every year our audits have gotten better. Um, it is our goal to have a clean audit by the time Ms. Harris uh, retires in a couple years, and I think we're so close to getting that. Well, once we do that, that is a feather in our cap for, for this administration, but namely your finance director. That is all her work, and it's a good cap to have in her, her, her little hat there. And community cleanup. I put flyers right up here, so if you need to take one of those, please take them. That is July 16th from 8 to 11 p.m. You can drop your items off at 621 Walsh Drive. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Council. Thank you. Yes. Um, last time, last time we spoke about this, you were unsure as to the availability of pride workers. Um, Mr. Kiko, I think said they may come or they may not come. I will double check that and shoot council out an email uh, tomorrow morning. He did say there would be Boy Scouts on. Okay. Yeah, on there the are site. people coming, but he was also looking for some volunteers as well. So. Thank you. And before we go on, I know we got the legislation coming up. Um, I don't know if council got the email. I sent it out kind of late today because I was renegotiating these rates all day. So I wasn't happy with the gas rate going up $3. That was significantly high. So we did get him to go down. He shot back. Instead of going up to the $7.49 or $7.29, $6.49. Um, that's not, I'm not, I'm not mad at that. I, when I sent out a link today that has a national average of these MCFs, it's $8.19 right now. So we're still well below the average. Um, and this we can sign in. And another thing I like about this is that it is, it's, it doesn't take effect until two years. Um, historically, they have been very good about contacting us when rates have, have changed. We've actually amended our current contract in 19 when rates have dropped. At $3, I was kind of going to advise you guys just to let it ride. Um, I'm not as uncomfortable with this increase as I was with the three. Ultimately, it's your guys' call. But I, due to that, I had to reconfigure some of these numbers that were in the legislation. So I think before it was a $10,000 increase on gas for the year. Right now, it's equated to 6670 That's not too hateful. It's, it's truly that, not. Mr. Sorry. Go ahead. Is, is that a year? The 6000 something yes. is a year increase? Yep. Okay. Yep, a year increase. Okay. And that covers everything that we use gas in? Yep. Yeah, but that's starting in 2026. So if right, the rates continue right. on going up, now there's other, the double-edged sword is, if they go down, we're relying on them to come back and say, hey, we can reduce your rates. Historically, like I said, they've done that. They did it in 19. They came back and said, hey, we can get you cheaper. Let's go ahead and amend your contract. I have a good relationship with these guys. The band's great to work with. So ultimately, it's your guys' decision on that gas. I highly recommend the electric. Um, the rate is very comparable. It's very aggressive. Um, it was a little bit higher. We got them down to 0 .0532 cents. That is an $8,000 increase on our electric. We spend around 99, right now, $91,000 a year on electric in the city, and that's across all boards. That's gonna go up to 99, approximate. Um, and again, for the gas, we spend around nine, uh, 12, 13,000 now for gas. That's projected to go up about 19,250 in 2020, 26. So the increases aren't as hateful, they're not ideal. Of course, we'd like to go down, but we know that's not, the, that's not where the trajectories are going. So um, that's in front of you guys tonight, but before you voted on that, I did want to explain that to you guys and the audience. But correct me if I'm wrong, that's still better than anything else we could get, right? Um, yeah, DPNL is out 15 cents right now. Um, I haven't heard back from anyone on gas because I don't think anyone could beat the rate that I said they needed to be, to be honest with you. Now, I'm pretty aggressive when it comes to this stuff, so. And that's all I have for the city manager report. Are you happy to entertain any questions? All right. Any questions, council? All right. And moving along. Eventually. Here we go. All righty. Are we here? City manager report. Uh, moving on to comments from members of the public. If anybody has any questions or comments, please go to the podium. Uh, your name and address. And please try to keep it to five minutes. We'll keep time up here. Yep. All right. All right. There we go. Uh, good evening. Jeff Morford, 4720 Scarf Road, Miami County. Something a little earlier. I don't know if I was available or not. I know some dates and time schedules for meetings were called out. I'm just wondering if that's available. Is that something that's just perfect? Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sir. 
Sorry, sorry. Uh, just a little bit. I'm, I'm opposed and will always be opposed to any development on the property at Lake and Scarf, as it will severely and negatively affect the land, plants, and animals. I consider myself a steward of the property known as Silver Lake, and I will do all that is within my powers to protect the lake and its almost mild natural wetlands. The city has commented that New Carlisle needs growth, expansion, development, and oh yes, income tax money. You might think these four developments are the answer. I suggest that we, what we have here is special and should be cherished and consider ourselves fortunate. Change is not always an improvement. Out of the paper, New Carlisle has a population of approximately 5,500 over the next 10 years with the four potential developments the population would increase by approximately 4,400 and an additional 1,700 households, bringing the total to almost 10,000 people in 3,800 houses by 2030. That's not growth, that's an explosion. I believe New Carlisle has sent out letters to properties adjacent to this development, across the street from, or somehow connected to, from what I see looking at maps of the area, approximately 40 properties fit that bill. I was able to personally contact 27 of these 27, all were against the development. That's 100% of the people I was able to contact, New Carlisle citizens and Miami County. At the last zoning board meeting, DTC management was asked if they considered their impact on Bethel schools or roads. Their answer was no. It seems to me, if a large, dense development like this is in the works, all factors need researched, let alone environmental impact on a 15,000-year-old naturally formed lake and wetlands. Please consider all you have heard from New Carlisle residents and Miami County residents. You resent the people of New Carlisle. Listen to them. Thank you. Anyone else? The, either oh, one. Oh, okay. I just had uh, Tanya Wells, 5330 Eastland Drive, Bethel Township, Miami County. Um, I did have one question. You had asked about the two studies that council will have them prior to the meeting. Was that to prior to your meeting of approval or prior to the public hearing? And will public be allowed to view those studies? I'm assuming they would yeah. be public documents. Yeah, I mean, if they were... they 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 are a private entity right now. There is no formal agreement between the two. So once they, I mean, again, I am no attorney, and I don't want anything I say to be used against me. I don't know the answer. I don't. At but, some point in time, if they are legally obligated, they will. If they're not legally obligated, they won't. But well, we're doing a traffic study. But the traffic study, yes. Yeah, that would the be public talk. Yeah. Okay, I was. Both studies. So the traffic study, at least, is oh, yeah, for sure. possible. And you guys will have the environmental study, but may or may not be privy to the public, correct? And I think, I mean, at least for me, it, I would want it to be public, and I would definitely research that and look into it, because it should be. It should go out. I'm sure once they sign an agreement, they'll have to. Right. Prior I'm to just that, saying. no. Like, I don't prior to you it. having it to this hearing is probably not going to happen. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would assume, because there's no formal agreement being done yet. You're mm -hmm. talking about the environmental. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But the traffic, traffic should be? The traffic will be, yeah. Because okay. we're doing that on our own. Okay. And I know this, and sorry to interrupt you, but like when a private entity does work on behalf of a public entity, that's when they're subject to sunshine laws, <coughs> i.e. trick that you now have to supply yes. the document you recommend. So there's no formal, so I think once we have something in writing, then they're working on behalf of an entity, mm -hmm. and that's when they would be subject to the sunshine laws. I just don't know when that exactly is going to. Occur. Right. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Um, I do have one, um, something that I had found and just curious if you guys have thought about this, looked at this, has to do with the infrastructure and making sure your sewer systems are ready for these developments in general. I called about probably a month ago or more um, the Ohio EPA to find out specifically if the sewer septic systems or sewer systems were going to be able to handle the capacity. I asked specifically about New Carlisle's annexing Bethel Township. What they had told me, and they informed me that 
At the time, it's at 58% capacity. By adding 300 houses at the time, that's approximately what it was, it would go up to about 70% capacity. At about 80% capacity is when the Ohio EPA comes to New Carlisle to find out where are you going to do and how are you going to build your infrastructure to handle the further density and the further need for that. So my question is, is with another three developments on top of this four, how exactly is that going to be paid for, I guess, besides the housing being developed? Is that the goal? Is that the homes are being paying for that infrastructure? You're talking about water or, or waste? Waste. Waste. Okay. Well, I know we, you know, we've been we've been slowly working and, and retooling our waste as we've been going even prior to this. So, um, you know, I think that would, you know, would def it's, it's a really good question. Are those numbers accurate? I would really question the math that was given to you because math is backwards. Math is universal. So I call we have we have we have X amount of people on our system now. We have 22 rooftops. We now have people, and we service people outside the city, so that's a 58 percent. Adding 300 homes is not going to shoot it up to. Seven. This came directly from the person who yeah. works at Ohio EPA, who did the math and said the straight math was this is where we are yeah, right that, now. That's a big and, jump for 300. And I agree with you, yeah. but realize that when I call the Ohio EPA and this is what I get the numbers, I would hopefully determine that you guys have the numbers. Oh, we are working on that. That is something okay. that we will definitely take into account. Working on it and being prepared for it are two different things. Well, you have to so, start on something to be prepared for, right? Correct. Correct. So that's and what we're doing right now. I hope so. I really hope with four developments, you guys do the due diligence when it comes to this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Anyone else? Ma'am. I'm Beth Van Heron. Two, Beth Van Heron, 2480 West Charleston Road. I used to live on Scarf Road right around the corner from the development. Um, I am Bethel Township. And first of all, I appreciate the planning committee for the time they took to look at the 115 acre development. And I see from the new proposal that it's less houses, so that's ideal. And let me just say flat out, I would like zero houses, but I also know how the world works and the development and annexation works. So nonetheless, I, I've heard you talk about taxes. I've heard, um, I think Mr. Rodenwald, you sat in front of me at one of the meetings and shared with somebody at all these income taxes that you're going to get. And I'd like to know if you guys have looked at the inflection point of, of what the estimated income is going to be for those people versus the homes that they're building. I mean, they're building $250,000 homes, which five years ago was like, that's a really nice home. But if you look at Carriage Trails, I think, which is the development between Bethel Township and Huber Heights, I think they're starting at 300, 320,000 now, just because of the increase in home prices. So I would, since you're doing your due diligence over the next 90 days, maybe you should think about slightly larger lots and slightly larger homes. That gets you more expensive property taxes and also generally a higher income that goes in there would pay your 1.5% income tax. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. My bottom line goal is obviously no development, but I would take less development. And again, I'm appreciative to the planning committee for the 250 lots. That's 44 down from what it was, and that's, that's great. So thank you very much, and um, look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I do want to reply just that just a little. I mean, because, yeah, they did come back with, you know, with well, I think they said 40 less homes, but it wasn't. And for me, for me as an individual council member, you know, because I know that there was some concern with them being 10 feet apart, which I, you know, I know it's our code and they're allowed, but I was hoping that they would have come back and said, okay, they don't, I, you know, obviously our code's 10 feet. I can build 10 feet if that's what I want to do because it's in your guys' code. But with, with the concern from, some of the new Ohio citizens and some outside of the city as, as you and, and some, I think some of the board members, I think, if I remember right, I was hoping they would at least come back and said, okay, we didn't just trim off these 40 over here. Right. We're going to go from 10 to, we'll meet you in the middle and say 16, and they didn't do it. That really left them. Well, but those losses they're building on the, the north side, those are the size of the loss that you guys have um, just in north, uh, west of your Post office, and that kind of what the neighbors were. Northwoods. Northwoods. And those have 800 square foot homes on them. 
I do not think a 250,000, I don't think anybody's built an acre square foot home anymore. Mm -hmm. Maybe they are. So you're, those lots are tiny, the homes are small, and, and they fill with great need in New Carolina. Right. They're going to have some smaller, slightly smaller lot size, and twice the size of the home. You're going to have almost zero green space. And so just, I mean, I'm not trying to tell you what to do on advocating just maybe slightly larger lots, but I am appreciative of the 250 that we got, so what do you got? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Ms. Fiber? Yeah. I shouldn't be. I can't help myself. Judy Bible, 806 White Pine Street. And I'm kind of on what she was just mentioning uh, in something they talked about at the planning board meeting that I didn't realize that council is the ones who set the zoning whatever it's called code for different areas and since this hasn't been annexed yet technically it has not been zoned correct right but the process has been started okay. so it would if we i think i know where you're going so if we decided right now hey let's change it to 20 feet between a house since they've already started the process they would be grandfathered in i would assume would that be a fair statement Mm, there's nothing in writing. You guys can change the zoning code, but changing the zoning code is a very drawn-out process. Right. But I'm I saying since they've started, but I would assume since they've started, the, I mean, again, like you, I'm not an attorney, but I would assume since we, if we had started the process, and, but they started their process prior to us redoing it, I would imagine that it would be going off the prior code that was in place. Mm. I, I wouldn't recommend it. Jake wouldn't recommend it. But no, I'm not saying yeah. to. I'm just saying that's that's the way I would imagine it would happen. Well, that you know might be something to check into because if it isn't zoned already because it's not part of the city, right? What's to say we can't say it's going to have to be medium density as opposed to high density mm -hmm. or you know something in that area? But even like the one up that you know. I don't think anything's been done yet, but up, like up on 235 north of the car dealership. Mm -hmm. If nothing started on that one, that would be possible to make that a, a lower bigger, density area. Less dense, yes. I, 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 so, I mean, you're still getting tax money, but you're not. Maybe you also might run away all your developers because, again, it's a bottom line situation. The market research states this is the size of lots, the type of houses people are buying. If you change that code to make it more di more distance apart, larger houses, bigger lots, you're only you're you're pigeoning your hole into certain developers that cater to that type of affluency. Right. Um, I would be hard pressed to find a lot of people that could afford that type of house in this area to the extent of how many we're going to have. Yeah. Um, but again, these developers, they put millions of dollars into these developments. They are doing their market research. They know what works and what doesn't work. Council can change the code all they want, for sure. But I think it's going to do long-term implications than more harm than good <coughs> but in the long term. I, I, to me, it's like certain areas may be more suitable for high density. But the area there in Miami County, to me, at, at the most, and I know Bethel Township and their you know, plan, 10-year mm -hmm. plan or whatever, they had those designated as possible two to three acre lots. But we're not Bethel Township. I know, that's but I mean, that's, that's yeah. what, and to me, mm -hmm. that's more suitable for that area simply because of the, the, the wildlife, the conservation, the water issues mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. everything. Whereas someplace, the one north of, north of Northwood, mm -hmm. north of the school, that would be more of a low, or high density area simply because it's kind of an extension of the Northwood, even though the houses will be different. Mm -hmm. But it's that area is totally different than what you've got out out here. So. I understand, but I mean, you can also understand too that when they bring this into the city, it's an extension of Scarf in that area, which are very comparable lot sizes. And I know you had brought up earlier about the Northwood's houses, they're single, fan, they're single floor, these are double floors. So you get more you're building up yeah. opposed to out. In some cases, I'm sure the houses are a little bit bigger too. But, but over there, those are medium density. Over there on where I live, it's medium density housing as opposed to high density. Well, it's comparable. So it would be, yeah. this is just R5, I mean RPA because of the type it is. You know, at some point in time when that came in, Scarf, that was an RPA too. They changed, they probably changed it to R5 yeah. later on. 
But again, the same process that developed Northwoods is the same process we're doing now, just different style of house. Yeah. It's really all it is. Same that, process. It, to me, it's just something to consider because sure. it's no. I don't. I don't know what you know. I know you don't speak for everyone who's in this situation. I mean, you know, I don't want. I don't like the idea of a ten foot separation. I would like to see it more like eighteen to twenty. Uh, but I know that there's some of you that that's still not enough. I, well, to me, the, the what's the word? The aesthetics of the area need to be considered as much as anything. And to shove right. even a two story house that's got a lot of square footage on it, and then you add a garage shoved on a little lot is not very aesthetic to the area, especially a, a rural mm -hmm. area like that one really is rural. So. Well, let me, um, thank you, Ms. Bible. Um, I, well, I'll go into it after we're done with this part. Any other questions or comments? Hi, Mary Ann Layton. 8085 East New Carlisle Road. So hard press to find buyers for larger lots? Do you need mm, Are you talking what's up? I'm sorry. You made the comment. I said I don't think the market research there to have two hundred fifty homes that are or two hundred homes that are you know four or five hundred thousand. Oh yeah. You can sell them in a heartbeat. Hmm? You they'd sell. I don't. I would. I would. You, I would take the. Travel I would take the developer's opinion on well, that. Well, what, what is the market it, uh, research? I mean, if the market research there was to support that, I would say they would be doing that type of project there. Well, but they don't make as much money doing that. Okay. That's like the four, we call it the lower legs, the right. eight and nine acres Oops. on the south that's side of redundant. New Carlisle Road, which they've made four lots, and that's approximately what nine acres. They'll sell. They'll sell first, and then they've got septic and water or wells and then the one further down when you go through Bethel Township those lots sell there's one around the corner on Scarf Road I think it's around two acres and it's five hundred and fifty thousand dollars they sell so less density more money per lot per house now They'll sell. Just, just, I mean, just hear me out here. You understand the higher income earners typically pay less in taxes. You know this, right? Percentage wise. Typically, higher earners understand the tax code a lot better than uh, uh, a medium income earner. That file is just a straight tax form. Um, so, those people who earn four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 out of four of those houses on Dayton Brandt, mm -hmm. the odds are their tax rate is based off of just studies and knowing it's probably about 10 percent well then by the time they do their deductions and everything else they're paying probably what i pay in taxes why they're making three times what i make because they have more deductions. but what is the tax what did people in new carlisle pay one and a half percent yeah so does it matter if you have a bigger lot with a half million dollar house you still pay one and a half percent of your Income? Your, your gross income. Your gross income? Gross earned income. Yes. Gross earned income? Mm -hmm. so. Bigger lots. Yeah. Pardon? Still earned income. Yeah. No, that's, well, less, less that's density. because I. <clears throat> no. No. <laughs> yeah. Bigger lots, bigger houses. No bigger one's telling you to buy them. More money. I mean, no one's saying okay. you have to buy it. Pardon? No one's saying you guys have to buy these lots, but these lots will sell. Well, for example, the fellow that came in about the garage. Okay. He said his lot was 125 feet and he's... 70 by 120. And he's having trouble getting it set far enough back to make a turn to get into his garage. No, that's that's their opinion. Oh, that's their opinion. I, I, had, a, I had a house with the garage just like it. I lived on Galewood. Um, Actually, that house backed up to my house on Gilwood. Um, I had the same garage. I had no problem pulling both oh, of my cars. So pulling both of my so cars. So he won't back. have a problem either. I don't think he would. No, because <laughs> mine sat ten. My my garage actually sat ten feet by ten feet, and I had you no got, problem. You're just bound to turn on small lots and small houses. I most definitely am. Yeah. Oh. Well, I'm the there.
Kelly Vickery, 8780 East New Carlisle Road, Bethel Township, Miami County. <clears throat> when, we were, when we had talked a, um, a few meetings back, I don't remember exactly when, um, we had talked about um, bigger lots and I don't understand, and only 10 foot between the houses. Um, I don't understand why we only, why DDC came back with only the back row. You'd have to ask them. Wider lots, and why we're not recommending that they make all of the lots wider and not, I mean, I don't see where we saved any density the density is still the same. Yeah, they did it. They did it on the, Mi on the Miami County legs, but they did nothing with the density within the actual development. And I'd like to see, you know, the recommendation that that they do something to reduce that density in that 115 acres. Um, and that's, I mean, just because I'm right across the street from it, and yeah, it helps that the two legs are gonna have less houses on them, but there's just as many on the, the other part of it, so it's really not reduced the density at all. Thank you. Anyone else? No? Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice Drive. Um, I, I don't understand why, if we're the ones that are approving it, we can't tell them what we want. Tell them we don't want 10 feet, we want them further apart. I mean, is there some reason you can't do that? Because the code's already pre the code's already in place and has been in place since, you know, whenever, the 80s, 90s, whenever it was that it was set, that it is 10 feet apart. So that's what they have. That's, and that's for any place in New Carlisle? Uh, it would depend on the... Uh, the, the, the ARPA, yes. Yeah. yeah. On what? The ARPAs and these type of developments, yes. So there's already, there's already guidelines in place. Please. Be like this. Can I interrupt? Sorry to interrupt. Please. Let me explain this to you. Would you post a speed limits 35? Would you give someone a ticket for going 30? Speeding ticket for going 30 and a 35? No, you wouldn't. So equate that to that. They have a guideline to work in, minimum 10 foot setback, 10 foot this. This is a code that, not this council, previous councils, I showed you some of these things were passed in the 80s. But when a developer comes in, they pull our codes and they say, all right, this is what we have to work with. So it's the same kind of example. I would never get a ticket for going 30 miles an hour in a 35. So these guys are never going to probably reduce or go above and beyond their after minimum. So for council to go in and say, we want 20 feet, that's against their codes. That's well out of the boundaries that this council, that a council has already approved to be working. They can't sit there and say, go above and beyond. They go above that. They are working within their guidelines of what they have. They can make the recommendation all they want, but if the developer doesn't want to change it, they are working within the established guidelines that this legislative body has approved. So the easiest way I can explain it to you is an analogy I just gave. Is speed limit is posted code 35 miles an hour. If I'm going 30, I'm not expecting to get a ticket. So if I'm coming in here, I'm building, if I'm dividing these lots up, I know within the code I can go 10. I'm not expecting to have to be forced to go to 20 when your code states 10. Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. <laughs> you as a council have the right to say not approve it and say we would like to see it here tonight. No, because it's let, let them decide what says, they want to do. Minimum lot line is your five feet, so ten foot okay. It's like your minimum lot size is 0. 0.25 acres, but you could always have 0. 0.2 acres, you know. But you need a BCA. Mm -hmm. I'm not I don't want to interrupt your meetings again. Not no, it's not correct. because they can they can recommend it all they want. They can recommend it all they want, but they don't have to adhere to it because they met the minimum. They can sit there and say, "Yeah, we're not, we're doing ten, 
they want to go 20, they want them 20, they go like, we're not doing it, we're not going to make our money. So therefore, the project stalled. Okay. But then, that's, those are two different questions. One is the development. <clears throat> you, I'm sorry, what I understood you to say was they couldn't approve G20, but they, they could. They could approve 20. They don't have to accept it, though, is what I'm trying to get at. The developer? Yes. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. They don't want to accept it. Let them go somewhere else. Okay. Hang on, guys. Hey, guys. Stop, 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 stop. we got to get this organized. Mrs. Emily, anything else? Questions? Anything else? You got time? A, a, a little confused about: Is it just that wetland that is going to be given to the city that they won't maintain? Are they maintaining everything else? I mean, that is what the said. You mean the, the scarf property? I mean, yeah, that'll eventually, if if council was to pass it, would become that yeah. becomes New Carlisle's responsibility to care for. No. Well, no, that's what Mr. Bridge told me, and that's what they told, that's what they said at the planning meeting when I asked DDC. He said they weren't going to take care of it, that they were giving that to the city. Please do. Let me address that for you. Okay. Yes, I forget, I forget your name, but I know who you are, yeah. <laughs> I gotta go. That is a park, which is a walking trail, natural walking trail. Part of the, the homeowners association. But I asked because DDC. I asked DDC, and he said, "No, we are not keeping it." Or, yes, they are because if the city doesn't take it. <laughs> then we didn't approve that. So well, he told me he did. So I don't okay. know. That's just okay. what he Mr. said. And that's what Mr. Bridge told me. He said we just that weren't going to That has not even been determined yet. So it's either going to be if the city doesn't want it. If the city doesn't want it, it goes into the homeowners association. So if you live in that development, you're going to be you're as a group that is explicitly your area. No one else can come and walk in those trails. If council chooses for it to be a city thing, then yes, the city will pay to maintain it. It'll be a public park. Okay. We haven't even got that far yet. We don't know well, how it's going to go down. I was sitting beside the DC, almost beside the DDC guy, and I said, are you guys going to be responsible for that? And he says, no, we're deeding it back to the city, and the HOA is not going to have anything to do with that's mowing that or anything. That's, that's what he told me. Well, that's, it hasn't, it, we, we, we haven't even decided that yet. Okay, well, why, when I asked you about it, you said, well, we're just not going to mow up. We're going to leave it natural. Because that's what we would do if, it, if anyone takes it, whether it's us or the HOA. I'm sure they're not going to mow all that back there. It's a walking trail. It's no different than yes. the bike path we have here. It's mowed a little bit on site of the trail, but other than that, it's wild. Well, they said they weren't going to mow anything, right. and they weren't going to put any trail in. You had to Let's move on. I'm sorry, Janelle. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> the whole thing about it. All right. Anyone else? Of course. I wouldn't want it any other way, you know. I'm being serious. You're giggling. And here, here's what I was going to ask. You know, since ever, anyone else have any other comments? Okay, good. So your time's up. So, um, you know, a lot of talk. Everyone's saying that, that the council's shoving this down the citizens' throats, or the township, or whatever. I mean. The, apparently, and I'm going to ask you, Ms. Layton, do you know how everyone up here is going to vote? Because you're saying, I'm going to call you out because you're saying that council is all for this. No, I did not. And I've got. I yes, you did. Yes, you did. Yeah, you did. Okay. All right. I'll tell you what. Okay, so I know how one person's going to vote. I know how I plan on voting for this, even though we're not even to it yet. I, I don't know how a single person up here plans on voting for it. So I don't know how anyone else out on the other side of this. I'm not arguing, but to say that the city is shoving this down even. Say that. I'm saying in general because there's multiple. I don't, I don't say okay, the, the 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 city wants to move forward. We'll say it that way. No, I said. I'm not saying you in general. I'm saying I'm saying in general. The the consensus is is that the majority of the people that come to these meetings think that this is going to be a done deal that we want to vote it through. And I think that's a fair statement to say. I'm, I'm talking, please, hold on. So I, I don't know how anybody up here is going to vote on this other than myself. And I said it at the last meeting, as of the way it sits right now, I, I'm not for this development for a couple different reasons. You can go back and listen to it. Um, 
but you know, as citizens of New Carlisle and people outside of New Carlisle, I'm not saying that you should sit back and always just say yes, we're going to let these guys go forward and hopefully it comes at you because you should question your officials. You should question your management and city officials and so on down the line. But I think also you have to give them the opportunity to do their job, to, to ask those questions, to get the traffic studies, to get, you know, the, uh, the environmental studies from the developer and so on. I, do I think these houses will sell? Yeah, unfortunately, um, I think they will. I don't. I don't like the looks of those houses. I've went and looked at some of them. I'm not saying they're bad houses. It's just I. I personally wouldn't want one. I don't think it fits the profile of what fits our area. Um, but that. But that's you know that's not you know my my reasoning for which way I'm weighing in on things. But um, I, I just think again. I've said it multiple times. I think you have to respectfully. I'm not saying don't come and ask questions. That's not what I'm getting at. Because I don't want to say, well, you said that we should just trust council. No always come and ask questions that's what that's what you were here for that's what this forum is for but there's just been a lot of jump that i think that ev the people were saying we're already for this and we're gonna do it and okay, that's other people, not me. i didn't on this particular part i didn't say you but i you know i, I don't know how one person up here is going to vote other than myself so for anyone else to say outside of this room that council is going to pass this, I mean, maybe we should have them in our meetings because they know more than, than some of us. They know more than we do, and I like to know where we're getting all so, this money from. But th that's all I wanted to say is, you know, yeah. we're, we're all doing our jobs. I know that you guys don't always like some of the answers some of us give, or this person gives, or that person gives, or whatever it may be, um, but, you know. I, I've lived here 44 years. I want what is best for this town. I, I don't, you know, I'm not lining my pockets. <laughs> yeah. It, it gets it gets silly. It's like I, I appreciate any solid question because that that's that's what we're here for. I think they call them keyboard warriors or something. I don't respond to those people. Like I mean, some of these headlines. It doesn't matter, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what he wants. Oh, okay. It doesn't. It doesn't. No, he works for us. He works for us. Um, no, not to, Randy, not to, to be rude, but it doesn't matter what Randy wants. <laughs> it don't matter. I'm just doing my job. <laughs> so I just get all the crap from it. The people on my and all that, I do not respond to them, you know, what the, and everybody think that's why they're not here tonight. They found determined that there's nothing, you know, I said, just come talk. Well, you know. So, anyways, um, that's all I'm going to say. So, moving on. May I Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes, sir. Well, I know now, I know now how one person on this council is going to vote, and it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> I have not, I don't believe we have uh, done in our due diligence yet. Um, I, yeah, I see some of these comments on Facebook and I think, where, what planet are these people on? Um, and, they, and going through, recall them all. We haven't done anything yet. <laughs> yes. And that, that's, and that spreads like, like a virus. That spreads like a virus. The truth, the facts are not not, not important. They're not important. Well, to, to those people, they're not important. And I would like to counter one thing that you said. You said the developers just want to make money. Well, that's what they're doing. There's nothing wrong with the developers making money. There's nothing wrong with the developers making money. Marianne, 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 what would you, what would you do, what would you do if I tried to tell you, hang on, Jim, what would you do if I were to try to tell you, what would you do if I were to try to tell you how to raise cattle, hang on, guys, what would you do if I were to try to tell you how to raise cattle, you'd probably be a bit offended, right? Because I know nothing about it. It's, it's cattle more, get more money per. Right. These people know what they're doing. They've been very successful doing what they're doing. Without. So obviously they know they, they're doing it right. Yeah, but. 
Yeah, we may not like it, but they know the business. Yeah, we. <laughs> Within, we are bound on how much we can tell. Okay. Okay. Come on. Please. Please. Mr. Cook is calling for us to move forward. Yes. Right. I agree. Yeah. Move on to. All right. That was a nice, quick little discussion. All right. Now I gotta unlock my computer. No, we 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 got to move forward. Just one more. No, we're done. Now. One more. No. You said you're bound. You're bound by what you can tell. Are you not able to no. say you want an answer? Okay. Answer. Uh, a bigger lot by a specific lot size. Charge review and public reference. Committee reports. We're moving on. Do I have to get my name and all that since I'm on a committee? Yes. Yeah. Brandy Mullet, Parks and Rec Board. I, I was going to say, I have you memorized. Okay. <laughs> I think you all do. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that I want to bring up is something that I know we've talked about before. I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, I don't remember what the outcome of it was. But I am going to please, 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 please ask council to do whatever you have to do to move committee reports up on the agenda so that we can report off of what we need to report on prior to comments from members of the public. No, we didn't change it. I believe it had something to do with needing to amend rules of council. Rules of council. Um, I also believe that that was something that was maybe looked into on a somewhat frequent like annual basis or by I don't know how often you I don't know if you guys look into it or not it's approved every year mm -hmm. perfect when's it due again beginning of the year do what beginning of the year that might be a little long we, mr. mayor yes if, correct me if I'm wrong mr. Britt and mayor of council we can amend those uh, rules of council I think at any time during the year we want if council so desires to move you up and is not uh, stated in the charter that way, so then if it's in the charter that way, then we can't do it. It has to, we can only do it temporarily, and it can be done at every meeting, but I'm not sure if council would be up for doing it at every meeting. Because okay. you sit up front here and we like looking at it. I know, but I could have been out of here a solid. 45 minutes ago. Anywho, um, second thing that I wanted to mention, I want to give a big, big, big thank you to Mr. Bill Cook, Mr. Dan Roadwald, Mr. Scully Tipton, um, and Mr. Grimm as well for coming out, helping us get everything that we needed going for the fireworks celebration. Um, and also to Mr. Cook and Mr. Tipton um, for coming back the next day to help with the trash pickup. Um, overall, I think the event was a good, good time. I think, you know, see the comments on Facebook. I think a lot of folks weren't necessarily happy that it was so early. Um, but the way that I kind of look at it is, aside from the, the budgetary issues, you know, we save money. Um, but it also, you know, freed people up to be able to go. You get to celebrate two weekends in a row instead of just one. So. And I am a fan of fireworks no matter what. If, if you wanted to go set them off right now, I'd be out there watching them. So um, Parks Board is working on, um, we're going to start putting together um, kind of some proposals. Um, I talked to Mr. Bridge earlier. I know the CIP stuff is coming up. So we're going to be kind of going through and seeing um, if there's anything that we want to add, a request for CIP for, for next year, as well as we're going to start working on putting together our proposals um, as far as events for things next year. Trying to plan a little further in advance than what we have been able to so far this year. Um, so really excited to keep the momentum going. I think we've had we've had two good events this year. Um, we're really going to put our focus into trying to make those bigger and better for next year, and maybe even add something. You know, add a third thing that we can. Um, 
do for our citizens and you know get people out to have fun. Um, the last issue that I have to mention, um, in accordance with uh, the parks bylaws and the amendment um, that we made to the bylaws somewhat recently, it's been within the past few months, um, regarding the removal of a member, I am requesting um, for council to consider and vote tonight for the removal of Josh Mooney from the Parks and Recreation Board. Um, he has missed four Parks and Rec meetings, um, all of which were de voted on as unexcused absences um, by the board members. That's all recorded in our meeting minutes. Um, I have had no communication with Mr. Mooney. I have not heard from him um, in quite a while, actually. Um, and let's see here. I'll tell you the last time I heard from him. June 8th. Um, at that point in time, we had a meeting scheduled for that night. Um, he had kind of given me the indication that it was a 50-50 on whether or not he was going to be able to make it. Um, and I never heard confirmation one way or the other. He didn't show. Um, he also missed on 427, 517, 68, and 614. Those were all unexcused absences as voted on by the board. Um, so I putting that before you guys tonight to consider and vote on whether or not he should continue to be a part of our board. And just one thing on that, my opinion is you, you said you've got it in the minutes. Yes. Would you be okay with sending the minutes out to council just so they can, I mean, I'm not saying you're lying, Mike, I'm just saying so that they can at least see it for themselves and have a few minutes to think about it and maybe do it at the next meeting. Yeah, absolutely. If, if that's okay with council. I'm good with it. I'll forward the emails you got to them. Oh, I can. Okay, you going to do it? Yeah, I can okay. shoot it out. Okay. Sir? Did he give a reason why he didn't show up at any of the meetings, or he just not come? Um, the first one was April 27th. Um, I sent him a message. Our meeting, I believe, um, that night was at 6.30 p.m. I sent him a text message at 6.28 and said, hey, are you going to be able to make it? I did not get a response at all. Um, for the Tuesday, May 17th meeting, he said that his daughter had a softball game. Um, and he said he could try to call in, like do a, con like a speakerphone like conference call into the meeting. Um, we opted not to do that because I don't think that that's... Um, I, I didn't think that was appropriate. You're either there or you're not. Um, and then he said it, Easter egg hunt was a huge success, and I heard nothing else from him. And I'd be more than happy to forward our text communications along as well, if that's necessary, if you guys want to see. Um, June 6th, I sent him a message asking if he would be able to make it to our June 8th meeting. I told him it was at 6 p.m. Um, he responded the next day and said that his daughter's softball game looked like it was going to be rained out. Asked me if the meeting was going to be here or at the firehouse because we had to move a couple. I told him the meeting was going to be here. <coughs> um, June 8th for that meeting, he said the weather is pushing back tonight. If the girls play, I won't be able to make it. I said, okay. And he said, I'm still 50-50 on whether or not I can make it. I saw your email that you have to work, so I wanted to keep you posted because I wasn't able to be at that meeting. Okay. So he's, um, not, he's not an upset member or anything. It's, he's, just, he's just got too much on his plate is what it sounds like. Yeah, and that was one of the, you know, that was one of the concerns I brought up when he applied and was, right. was in consideration to be appointed to the board was he talked about his schedule. Um, you know, he coaches. Um, I don't remember which grades. He coaches golf. He coaches basketball. I know his daughters are very active in activities. Um, you know, and I brought that up when he was going through the interview process. I said, you know, it sounds like you've got an awful lot on your plate. Are you sure that you have time that you can carve out for this? Because we do have rules in place about mm -hmm. being present. Um, and he assured everyone at the time that he was appointed that he could make it work. So. Mm -hmm. Well, if council's okay with that, she, if you can shoot out the minutes just so we can have them and then. Mr. Bond. Just one question. Did you tell him you're going to recommend that we get I did not. Yes. He knows. Oh, he knows. Okay. I, I know him personally. He okay. Okay. It's, I, it's, it, this is good. And he'll, oh, he won't care. It's not going to break his heart. He's extremely busy. He's, it's getting busier. 
Yeah, and that was, I mean, I know with, with his job and yeah. it's summertime. He travels so. a lot, he coaches multiple sports. Okay. His daughters play multiple sports, so, so. he didn't realize it was going to be this intense. Uh, so, good? <laughs> sure. If, if uh, she is recommending the removal based on their minutes and based on what Councilman Rodewald just said, I see no reason to wait till the next meeting. If, if he's, he, he knows it's coming, we might as well just go ahead and do it, and then she can be, or whoever can be on the lookout for somebody as a replacement. So with that said, if nobody has any questions, I will, go ahead, Mr. No, no. Oh, Mr. Make Grimm, the motion. I, I was gonna make the motion, yes. Make the motion, I'll say. I'll make the motion that we accept her recommendation to remove, and I don't know the gentleman's name. Josh Mooney. Josh Mooney. Josh, to remove Josh Mooney from the Parks and Rec Board. Second. I question. How many people will that leave you with? That leaves us with three, which is what we need for a quorum. Okay. So we are still functional. Um, we've been toying around with some different meeting times. You know, we were doing our meetings during the daytime because it's kind of nice to get them done and over with and then you kind of have the rest of your day to do what you need to do um and then we we moved and we tried some evening meetings to see if we could drum up more interest um to date no one from the public has attended any of our meetings so trying i'm if i knew anybody i would certainly be recruiting pretty heavily but i would like to I, you know i would like to to get to a five member board like we're supposed to have you should take up an annexation. You'll get a lot of people. But... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Parks and Rec wants to annex one, something. <laughs> Just throw some gas on it. I didn't hear. Do what? I didn't hear. I was talking. Yeah. yeah. yeah that, that'll get, some, that'll get you some work. I was going to say that. I was going to say something like, "Was there a parks or annexing from Miami County?" But I didn't want to. All right, Mr. Barnett, would you call for the vote, please? Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodo. Yes. Mayor Lauer. Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm. Yes. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Motion to accept. And if you would still like to see our minutes, I'm more than happy to send them out. I don't think we need them myself. I don't know about rest of council. No. I mean, it's over and done with now that minutes is. I mean, they're riveting. It's a good read. <laughs> you no. don't think we get enough stuff to read? <laughs> oh. I would like to make a comment. Yes, sir. The fireworks were incredible. Yes. Well, thank you. They, yeah, were, they was quite loud. Every single minute. Oh, I, yeah, I'm going to send everything to you now. <laughs> yes. Now yeah, fireworks are great, so yes, good job. So you setting up a contract and you know, your group right? <laughs> and the council members and citizens who helped. Well done. Yeah, try for bigger and better. Yes. Um, uh, also, we've got on here for um, the charter review. I know none of them are here. We mentioned at the last meeting, um, if you guys have read over and you had in. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. I'm sorry. I was just thinking of um, Don. Don, thank you. Um, if you guys have come up with any questions or feedback to shoot it to the to the uh, charter, because I would say probably at the next meeting, uh, I still think we have it. We still have time to the deadline to get it to um, to the board of elections. So I mean, your party people, you have to do everything in open session. You can't communicate via email on your recommendations. I'm not, on charter I'm not saying we are. You just said email charter review your concerns. That I misunderstood what you yeah, said. Yeah, I said you, you did. said. Oh, I'm sorry. We asked if anyone has any. Yeah. I Council thought you said go ahead and e email charter. They were emailed the charter, they, right? They, That's what he said. Oh, the gotcha. email you got. Yeah. Then if he you just any, asked. If they had any questions or concerns, then they can go to the charter review meeting. And oh, yeah, they have to do an open session. I, saw, I thought I heard you say email the questions to charter review. If I did, I apologize. No, it was no. my fault. My fault. Um, yeah, he's here, he's but, here. I, I mean, we've mentioned it before, and I don't, have you guys got any <laughs> feedback on it? Yeah, we haven't been meeting at all because. Okay. Right, right. So what I would suggest is that, you know, go over it one more time at the next council meeting. Uh, I'll get with you. Maybe we'll add a section in here to, uh, to set the, the, okay. the procedures in place to move forward with getting it to the board of elections and so on and how we want to handle that. I know the charter states like if it's two months before, but that's for someone running for council. So this is a non 
person thing. Yeah. So I think there's different requirements. He has not returned my email. So I'm thinking it's three months before November. Yeah. Just keep in mind, if we can't hit November, we can do the first election cycle in 2023. Okay. So we'll discuss it more at the next meeting. Just to give them one more, anyone else, any more chance if they have anything they need to mm -hmm. figure out. All right. Um, moving on, resolutions done, ordinances. Ms. Burner, please. All right, we have ordinance. 2022-25, this was introduced on June 21st, 2022, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance approving the editing and inclusion of certain ordinances and a resolution as parts of the various component codes of the codified ordinances, providing for the adoption and publication of new matter in the updated and revised codified ordinances and replacing ordinances in conflict therewith. All right, council. So moved. Second. Five pages in order here. All right, so an explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly housekeeping ordinance that we do. So anytime that there is changes that you, council makes to our code, like Janelle, like change the plant, anything on planning on setbacks, if they change that, that gets sent to them. Um, if there's any change in state code, once a year they do update that. So that's what we have in front of council tonight. Council, any questions, Good comments? Question. Second. When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleton? <coughs> yes. That passes 7 0. We have ordinance 2022 26. This was introduced on June 21st, 2022. Public hearing in action tonight. An ordinance amending ordinance 19 30 E regarding electric generation supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. Second. Can I make a suggestion um, that we approve it as amended with the new effective rates? Because right now we all, I don't want to amend it with the current rates. So with the amendment of the new rates. Okay. So the new rate will be 0 .0489, no, I'm sorry, 0 .0532 cents per kilowatt hour. Instead of point zero five four five. Yes. yes. Thank you. So as amended. Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Bridge, I would ask that this uh, ordinance is changed and sent back out to council. No, I'll do it. If, if that would be possible. Oh, for sure. Yep. Thank you, sir. Yep. <clears throat> Any other questions, council? You're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Ca Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. That passes 7 0. We have Ordinance 2022 27. This was introduced on June 21st, 2022. Public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into a contract regarding natural gas supply services for use within the city of New Carlisle, Ohio. So moved. Second. Second by Mr. Bone. Um, can we have a motion to approve as amended with the proposed rate of $6.49 per MCF? That's what he said. That's exactly what I said. You didn't hear it? No. <laughs> Is my hearing going bad today? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, okay. I, I said, did, I did so even, move as amended to the that. new. <laughs> I didn't hear it. I'm sorry. My bad. Obviously, we're having a problem in there. 49, <laughs> correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. And then Mr. Bond Anything seconded Anything else you that. want to say, sir? Mr. Bond seconded that <laughs> exact motion. Yeah. All right. As amended. As amended. And, and we'll get a copy of the amended ordinance sent out to us also, please. Yeah, but for the record, the if you're number? amending it, you would probably want to put their rate as what you're amending it is, for the record. So that's why I wanted to jump in and say it. That's it all. was uh, 7.425, wasn't it? $6.49. <laughs> I missed it. Okay. But it was the old rate. I knew I had one of them, right? Well, any other questions, Council? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Okay. All right. Councilman Cook? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Lindsay? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Mayor Lowry? Yes. Vice Mayor Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. <coughs> that passes 7 0. Our last one is Ordinance 2022 28, introduced on June 21st, 2022, public hearing and action tonight. An ordinance adopting the tax budget for the city of New Carlisle, Ohio for the fiscal year beginning January 1, 2022.
2023 and submitting the same to the auditor of Clark County, Ohio. Council. So moved. Second. Second. By Mr. Vice Mayor. And an explanation of this ordinance. This is a yearly housekeeping ordinance. Um, we have to do a tax budget. We're one of the few counties in Ohio that actually have to do this step. This is the first step to our overall budgeting process. So uh, this will lead into us getting a certificate of estimated resources that we plug into our actual 2023 operating budget. These numbers will change, by the way. Of course they will. Absolutely. I mean, why wouldn't they change everything? Any discussion, Council? When you're ready, Ms. Burner. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Gray. Yes. Pass the 7-0. Other business, community cleanup will be Saturday, July 16th, 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. Drop off at 621 Walsh Drive. And you can also find flyers for that on the city's website, Facebook page. It's been floating around. So if you have any questions on that, or call the city building. But did council have any other discussions? Um, I had one after. Uh, what? I'm sorry. After one of the comments from the public, um, I would like to ask if council would entertain the idea of giving Mr. Bridge the uh, direction to look into changing the, the uh, code for the width between the houses and what it would take and what, what legalities need to be done to do so. <clears throat> I'm not saying to, to a set width because I don't know. To, to what width are you referring to, Mr. Mayor? To the, to this, you know, for, for this example, for what we have. Between the two houses? Like yeah, to take it from, you know, whatever it is now, 10, 10 foot to, 20. I, I know we, you know, 20, 18, whatever it may be that counts, but just to look at it to see what it would take to do so and what kind of timeline it would take to do it. Well, that's actually outlined in your code, how to change your zoning code. So I'm pretty sure that the planning board has to make a recommendation or an applicant has to make the recommendation. I'm not sure council can make that recommendation on their own. So I'll definitely, if you guys make the motion, we'll look into it. Um, and I'm not asking mm -hmm. for specific, you know, mm -hmm. width. I'm just asking what, it, what the process is. Uh, I'm a... Mm -hmm. to, to request the process, I think, Council as a whole could just ask the manager to look into that. I don't think that would take a. He would motion. probably want a motion. Would it? Yeah, for this, I'd want a motion. So you wouldn't do it if we asked you to? Well, you'd have to do it in form of motion. Yeah, because we're, we're giving him a direct, You're directive. Right, we're giving him a direct order more or less. Okay, I make the motion then to make it 40 foot between houses or less. <laughs> Not doing that. No, that's pretty. pretty, yeah. pretty <laughs> to look into it. Correct? Yeah, just to look into it, yeah. A second by Mr. Cook. No, no uh, dimensions there. So you guys, do you realize this is already outlined in your code, right? Yes. Yes. Sure. Okay. Yeah. It's outlined in the code. Uh, we'll look into it for sure because I wanted Jake to give his opinion on if you guys should do it or not. Yeah. That, that's the actual I'm process to do the process. It's already outlined in your code. But that's what I'm getting at. Should be. So maybe I didn't word it so properly. So maybe it's just have Jake look into the ethical of changing the code at this point in time of the game. Well, it wouldn't it wouldn't affect anything that's going on right now, but it <laughs> future stuff. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, we, we can't, if we do get the code changed prior to getting anything before us, it would not affect that because that developer is working off of our current code. And he's already in the process of doing things trying to get what he wants. Mm -hmm. So for us to change the code on him now uh, would not be the right. smartest thing in the world. I would agree. You might as well just but, but for, for future things, same. you know, future developments, maybe we can do something with, with the code, like the mayor said, to make a little more distance between the houses. Uh, are, are you looking... Are you also looking at the lot sizes or just distance between the houses? I just, you know, I, I like Which would it. affect the lot size. Of course, of course. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's already in the code based off of what we can zone change, but we can change is, is designated. So, so in order to make the changing code, it's the authority of council. Whenever the public necessary convenience or general welfare or good zoning practices require, 
council may by ordinance after receipt of recommendations there from the planning board. So the planning board has to make a recommendation to you guys to change that aspect of it. Doesn't okay. mean I can't have Jake look at, you know, at what point in time is the best way to do this. I agree with you. I think once they submit an application that wouldn't impact them, let's just say RD4 comes in, all right? And this is done, the process started prior to that. Now they're gonna be subject to the new laws yeah. if it's effective by the time that they come in. Because that's just the first part of it. It takes a while to go through the motions of, of changing your zoning code. I think there's like a 30 day waiting period. But to me, again, no, I'm no attorney, so no one take what I say for word. DDC would probably be exempt since they did the formal application. They already started. Anyone past that would definitely have to fall into that category. And the reason why I ask is, which I think uh, Ms. Bridal brought it up, which I had already, mm -hmm. thought, you know, if the, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Fields, if the, if the, I don't think the planning board gave them a direct, you know, they didn't say this is what we want. We don't want, you guys didn't say it's 10, we want, you didn't say 18, 20, whatever it may be. <laughs> But I think as a whole, there was kind of consensus that, that they wanted more. They didn't say what, and they come back and they really didn't change that. They just knocked off a few houses over here. That's what I'm asking. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, that line got expanded for wider between the houses, but that's the only line they expanded. Right. The rest of them, the rest of them stays, stays the same. same. As far as the lot Right, and, that, and that's what I went from 50 to 60 on that back line. But, but the majority of the houses still were going to stay at 50, 10. 51 feet. And I, that's, I was just a little disappointed when they come back with it because I thought. They fell in line with the, with the regulations. So right. And I know, I know that. And that's where we're at. Yeah, and I get that. They, did, they, they fell in line. They didn't have to expand that back line. They did that no. because we asked. Yeah, I understand that. I just would have liked it if they would have come back with. Yeah. Okay, hey, we, we kind of heard what you guys wanted. We took it from 10 to, not that it would have made everybody happy, but if they would have come back and said we made it, you know, whatever, three feet more. Okay, well, at least they made somewhat of an effort. So, yeah, I mean, for future reference, I would like to look at it, is all I'm saying. Just my two cents. Anyways. I also want to mention um, community cleanup is the 16th. Oh, excuse is me. Also we have a motion we need to vote on. Oh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so the second was cook. Yes. Yeah. So what is the motion? The mo to look into changing the code from to something bigger than 10 foot. Well, well it's already in your code. All you do is pick up the code and read it. It tells you everything you need to do. I'd like, I mean, not saying I do your motion, but I think the biggest part is ethicalness of when to do it right. from Jake. The process is already outlined how you do it. I think the question is for council is when is the best time to go and make forth that change so these people coming in, in the future would have to be impacted by the new change versus who's already yeah. going to be grandfathered in. Right? So you're going to talk to Jake, you're going to talk to Jake about it then and see what Jake recommends. The planning board has to make the recommendation to council. So if the planning board don't want to do it, council can't sit there and say do it. It has to be on a recommendation from the planning board. And, and to, to with yeah, what so Mr. Bridge said, council has no authority over the planning board either. Well, you know, you got, you got authority. You I can, mean, we, we can ask, but they don't have to do what we ask. No, no I see it for that. I mean, they, they, that's what I was getting at. They can send us their recommendation, know when I'm going to do it. And if I'm not mistaken, we can override that and, and do it after we get their recommendation to either do it or not do it. And then we can override that. And then at that point, we would have to consult with the, uh, I guess, the attorney or whatnot to see what laws or what we have to do. Is that correct? Well, in my opinion, I would just consult with your planning board, see what they're going to do, gay implication as yay, yay or nay, because okay. either you do it or you don't. Uh, Moving forward, you have a cutoff date. Motion. And I can ask Jake in the middle of it, like, when do you think is the best time to start it? the next board Yeah, exactly. Uh, who seconded that, man? Cook. Mr. Cook, would you remove your second, please? No? Okay. So I can't on. remove the motion. I, <laughs> I want it to stand. I want something done in regard to this. Well, I think five feet is too narrow. No, that's not, that's not what he's... Whatever has to be done, let's get it done. Well, so the, so the next the process would be for us to go to to the planning board to the, to the, and, and, and as, as a whole. So that's what we need to do. 
So, I mean, we can't do anything tonight, and if, it, if we go forward, the vote is going to fail. We just need to vote. So, I respectfully ask you to remove your second. He did. Okay, I remove my, my motion. Right. Okay, we're good. So, we'll, we will inundate the planning board at the next meeting, and what meeting today is that? When is your next meeting, sir? Uh, I have to finish the time because Mr. Bridge is doing two jobs. Well, I have to finish the process. So you'll let us know when the next planning mm -hmm. board you'll send it out to us? Yeah. So am I doing anything with the motion? No. Nope. You're, You're done. done. Okay. It was, it's been withdrawn. Okay. So Just for council, some of council will show up at the planning board meeting and have a discussion with the board. All right. To get a recommendation. Yeah, but you can't force them to do that. You understand? I know we can't okay. force them. We can request them sure. to do it. And if they send a recommendation to us that, you know, basically we're not doing that, then once it's before council as a, as a non-starter, we can go with that and do what we want. Okay. Am I correct? I'm not sure on the I'm asking, All right. I'm asking him. I'm not answering. I don't know. I, don't I, I think that's, I think that's correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly yeah. All right. Any other business? Any business? <clears throat> Ms. Ms. Eggleston. Along with cleanup being on the 16th, that's also the July, Christmas in July. Yeah. Farmer's market that evening from four to nine that council will have a table set up at. Yeah, we'll be spending the day together, apparently. It'll be, it'll be cozy. Nope. All right. <laughs> anything else? Nope. Anyone else? Is there anything? Okay. All right, motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion from Ms. Eggleston, second from Vice Mayor. <laughs> right. Councilman Bond. Yes. Councilman Cook. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Lindsay. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Mayor Lowry. Yes. Vice Mayor Grant. Yes. 7-0. We are adjourned. Thank you.